Today I'm working on this thing. Now I've had this thing for several years now, I've all done previous videos on it and it's a Valhalla 2703 AC calibrator. I fully refurbished this thing years ago when I first got it, I don't know, 7 or 8 years ago, something like that I suppose. And I've done videos about it, it was fine. And when I got my Datron 4700 calibrator, that basically replaced this thing. I was sort of playing around with this thing one, one day and I was playing with the calibration key because it wasn't quite in calibration, it was a bit off and it wasn't quite perfect. Since I replaced some capacitors and stuff on it, it affected it a little bit. And anyway, I made a mistake when I was doing that and what happened is I turned the power off with the calibration key still on and it corrupted the calibration the actual adjustment stuff, it, it just corrupted it all I managed to get it back so if I'm not doing 1 volt output for example or 10 volts output they would be correct I'll show you that in a second and those worked but as soon as I went down to like that voltage that was not right like I'm getting 750 millivolts or so thereabouts right that one there I'm getting 490 millivolts or so then I'm getting about 243 so this is completely out of whack now I've had this thing sitting on my floor for a couple of years now since I got the Datron 4700 calibrator so I just put this to one side and left it there as a one day project I'll try and figure out what's going on thinking there's some kind of issue with the digital circuitry or I've completely screwed it up somehow because the calibration manual only mentions about setting up the actual value here there's nothing about zeroing now there are some trimmers inside for doing zeroing but they're not like for doing big offsets like this, they're just for fine tuning. And so it definitely isn't them. And it's like, well, how do I get this sorted out? Because there's no mention about a zeroing. There's no zeroing adjustment. Anyway, I was playing with it yesterday and I figured it out. I know what's wrong. So I want to show you, I thought I'd do a video in case this catches anybody else out or anyone else has got one of these things and it's completely out of whack. Because this affects this and also the 2705, it's very similar so that's also related to this right so i've got this set up now output is turned on obviously one volt now i'm going to demonstrate what i was talking about see it's completely out of whack and then we get down low enough it jumps up to 1.5 volts it's like ah this is a clue this is a definite clue now that i come down I can get back to one volt again. It's like that's interesting. Then I keep going down, and it will actually zero. So right, so it's actually zero now, basically. So this is very interesting because I think I know what's going on. In fact, I do know what's going on because I've already solved this yesterday and I actually unadjusted this range again so I could demonstrate the problem now what this relates to I believe in fact I'm 99% sure I'm right about this is an overflow issue as you're going up it's reaching the end of the conversions so obviously this is using a DAC digital analog converter as part of the circuitry it's actually using two DACs which are stacked together in order to create the wide range it's got an 8-bit and a 12-bit DAC. What I realise is happening is that because this is actually going up to way over what it's supposed to be, it's got a 1.5 there, right? And then it sort of wraps around. I'm thinking, ah, okay. So it goes back to zero there. It wraps around. What I think happening is actually overflowing on the bits into the DAC. Let me try and explain better. Right, so here's my crude example of what I'm trying to explain here. This is in a binary system, obviously. So I mentioned it's got a 12-bit DAC and an 8-bit DAC. This is the most significant bit over here, and that's the least significant bit over there. If you were doing a binary code into the DAC to do a conversion from decimal to, to analog, if you put in a bit of 1, you're putting, putting in that. If you're putting in a bit of 15, you're putting in all four of those bits there. If you're doing 128, you're doing this bit over here. 255 would be all of those bits. 256 you'd be jumping over to the next bit but as it's on the 8-bit DAC that's not there now this is where I'm thinking the problem is because 8-bit DAC's got 255 values now I don't actually know which DAC it's using for this particular section of the range whether it's a, using the 8-bit or the 12-bit but the same principle applies if it's a 12-bit DAC then obviously you have 3 more over here so it'd be 256 here or 4 more in total 256, 1024, 2048, 4096 Right, so it's be a 496 possible over that side. That'd make it a 12-bit deck. So what I'm thinking is happening here is going up, counting through all these decimal codes, 
to increase the code. It could be it could even be going the other way, it could be going down, not up. It could be inverted. Don't know. But I'm gonna assume it's increasing code with increasing voltage for simplification. It could be the opposite way around. But what I think is happening is as you're increasing the voltage up, let's say let's say that's one volt. And that's that 1.5 volt we're seeing, maximum. Alright? And that could be basically 0.01 volt, for example, right? Just for argument's sake. So as the codes increase, you get this 255 code, that's the maximum top out range. So let's say 128 should be the one volt setting we actually want. So it should be doing 128 for one volt. And it can overrange a bit up to 255, let's say, for example, right? Although in theory that should actually be double that voltage if it's linear. Probably would actually be linear. In fact, for simplicity, let's do that. Let's make that 2 volts. So let's say, for example, over here, these are the output voltages we're getting. We're not actually getting 2 volts, but I've just done this for simplicity so we can understand what we're actually getting. So let's say at 1 volt, the code going to the DAC is 128, which is that bit there. Right? This one's not here. Pretend it's not there, okay? Actually, I should probably do something with that. Pretend that's not there. That's what we care about, 8-bit. So let's say 1 volt is 128 code going in. So it produces a code 128 that generates one volt and then if you as you go up to say 255 which is the maximum on eight bits then it'll go up to two volts let's say although we're only seeing about 1.5 or so it may actually go to two volts i'm trying okay so what happens if you try and go above that well it's only got eight bits to use well depending on what the source is able to do the actual device that's controlling this thing it might wrap so why actually as you're going up here say if you look at the first four bits as it comes up to 15 it gets 15 then it wraps over, increases the digit over here, right? And that will continue on, you know, I'll go to 16 then, all right? So it starts on the next block of four. And so this will do the same thing. So I think what's happening, when it's going to the top of the range there, it's wrapping around, starting a new binary code of zero, but with 256, which it can't see because it's only an 8-bit DAC. Well, it could be, let's say, a 12-bit DAC, it could be going up to 13 bits instead of 12. Could be the same principle applies, all right? So that's what I think is happening. So I think it's actually the calibration point is actually sitting in here, right? So that's what we're getting, but that is actually wrong. I think because we're down here, we're actually getting 256 plus 128. What's that? Um, 84, 384, 384. I think that's the code we're actually getting for one volt, All right? So that's zero, 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 zero. Zero, zero, one, one. Now does it make sense? So I think we're actually getting 384 instead of 128 because it's trying to generate a 256 bit. But the DAC can't see that. So it's looping around and around. So we calibrated to this point that the actual source is generating 384 but seeing 128. So as you bring it down, so it thinks that's one volt. So therefore it thinks half a volt should be about half that which is why it drops off and then re-loops there you go, just crudely drawn this up here so if it thinks that 384 is one volt when you're dropping down to what it thinks is half a volt it should be half that output right for linearity be 192 192 is 128 plus 64 so that means it's actually going to go up in voltage not down because it's dropped off the 256 the DAC can't see that anyway it's gone from here to here See that? It's actually gone up. Which is why when we drop this thing down, we're actually getting up to 1.5 volts. Does that make sense? Because it's actually increased its value, not decreased the value, because of the wrapping around. So when we do that calibration, what we've got to do is drop it right down, so definitely right down in its bottom range, to get it back down into this range, not into the 256 range. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Okay, I'm set back up here. Let's demonstrate this. Originally, at the time, I didn't have a calibration key, but I got one with another piece of equipment I got. Was it a 2724, the resistance calibrator? I got a key with that. So, I can actually do calibrations probably with the key now. So, I'm just going to demonstrate on this one. This one, but the final calibration because it's not got enough digits on it. I've already done it on the Keyflee 7510, but I'm going to do it again for now to demonstrate what I'm doing. So, you can see we're doing one volt here. It thinks it's one volt, which is fine, okay? You'll be going, okay. That's right. Now one thing to watch out for on this, the control loop on this is quite slow. It's got a 300 milliseconds correction time. Now it's not just takes 300 milliseconds to settle, no, no. 
that's each step of the settling so it could take quite a while to actually settle down because if it's within an error if it's detecting an error between the voltages internally between the DC reference and the AC which has been coupled into the DC by comparing compares the AC to the DC internally and it does a correction and it will take 300 milliseconds between each correction step so if you make a change it can take a little while to settle down you know it can take a few seconds don't expect speed on this thing it isn't fast and of course the meters are turned off now this has got to settle down it's got to figure out what it's doing okay so we're in calibration mode I told it to output that voltage now what I'm supposed to do is adjust this to get one volt on the screen well I've already got it so you wouldn't have to do anything all right normally you just push the operate standby button and go to the next step but we know this is wrong now if you wind this down we'll see the voltage dropping as we saw before and we keep going down so we get it to over range so it goes to the top of that 255 or wherever it may be and then we keep going bring it right down to get one volt correctly here that's given the correct binary output to the DAC then now we've obviously got to tune this, I'm going to have to come back and do this properly with the uh, key flea and make sure it's all good again the control loop's a little bit slow so you have to give it some time to sort itself out let's get it close with this too much, maybe close enough We'll tell it that this 0.39752 is one volt because it is. That's it. Right now, we go to the next step, which I've already set up, and that's done. Right, so I'm not gonna. This is 0.1 volts. It's there. Right. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna unplug this because I don't want to shove a thousand volts out into my meter, although it can handle it. The Keyfully can't. Now I'm just gonna push this button to go through each step because I'm not gonna change any of these settings. These ones I've already done. I've already calibrated these ones although it wasn't fully warmed up, but it's close. I'm not going to adjust these. So we push it each time, it changes the range, gives you a chance, then you enable the output with that, and then you finish it. End. Great. Now you turn the calibration key off. And it resets. Now we should be good. So now, if I plug this in, we'll look at this again. I've only got this set to short calibration. There's two calibration types. There's a short cal and a long cal. And I've got this currently set to the short cal. I'm going to be doing the long cal after I finish this video. I'm probably not going to record it. Anyway, so we've got one volt set. One volt coming out. 100 millivolts. Yep. 600. Again, there's that settling time. Yep. 300. Yep. Yeah, 200 for completeness. So yeah, um, if I go up, this is a bit of a slow to respond thing. Don't try and go too quickly. This isn't fast. 1.2. Yep, it's there. So that's what the problem was. It's purely a binary overflow. That's what that problem was. I've had this thing sitting on my floor for about three or four years now since I've got the dash on calibrator, waiting for me to get around to figuring out what's going on with this. And once I actually looked at it properly with a clear head, I realized very quickly what was going on. That's how you fix that problem. So just inside here, I'll show you this previously when I was doing the original repairs on this thing. I had to 3D print handles for it and stuff because it was all broken when I got it. There's a dip switch just over here. Slave unit in this case it should always be open. Short cow is closed. This is what I've been doing is short cow, right? That's five steps. One for each voltage range. Other pin you leave open. This other one here, which is currently closed, that's 0.1 volts on a 1.2 volt range. What that means is if you're using a thermal transfer standard, which is what's recommended for doing these calibrations, I do actually have one, I do have a fluke 540B which I specify as a thing you should be using for doing this as well as a 343A DC calibrator for using that as a comparison reference but I don't need to do that I've got more modern equipment you can do it better although I could use those things if I wanted to because I do have them what it means is on the 0.1 volt range you're actually doing 0.1 volt 
if you have a thermal transfer standard it can't really do that and so it outputs one volt instead so what that means if that was set to open that would be generating one volts instead of 0.1 volts and use that and it's scaled instead so that's something to be aware of if you do have a thermal transfer stand you're trying to calibrate it with that you need to make sure that is set to being open so it's generating one volt instead of 0.1 volts all right so that's what those are for other videos to watch down below there subscribe over there patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel help me to make more content like this catch you later.